Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. Today we're gonna to be discussing the Cassette Beast Shiny system, which if you guys didn't know is actually accessible via the current demo build, but extra demo content is a video for another day. Now, before we dive in, if you've been living under a rock, Cassette Beast is a monster taming RPG coming to pretty much all major platforms that did recently come out with a demo during the Steam Next Fest and was available for a week. You can actually still access it via the Microsoft Store. So if you wanna play the demo, you can play it for free there. Anyways, and this is obviously very early Early information since the game isn't coming out till 2023 but my buddy Barry Bandit and I are here today to explain how the shiny system works which by the way is completely unique from any other monster taming game we've seen thus far and we're gonna explain how and why all that being said make sure to sit back relax subscribe for daily monster taming content and let's dive in Okay, so first things first, the correct terminology for shiny in cassette beats is bootleg to match the sort of retro theme of the game. Now, typically in most monster taming games, a shiny or its equivalent generally is a mere palette swap with no real differences from the non-shiny equivalent. Some games give shinies a few perfect stats like Temtem and others do an even better job of tying the strength of a monster to the shiny system like Coromon, but Cassette Beast does something that I would have never even considered, and what I'm about to discuss was brought to light through a joint effort of myself, one of the Cassette Beast developers, a Cassette Beast Discord member who goes by the name Sark, and my buddy Barry Bandit who will be speaking shortly. Okay, so firstly, how does the system work? Well, one of the devs had this to say, monsters have a tiny chance to spawn as a bootleg. This changes their elemental typing and their color palette. It also means that they have a new sticker pool that is procedurally generated. Finally, bootlegs have a higher chance of getting uncommon and rare stickers when they rank up. The way stickers work is by increasing your star rank of your monster. For each star rank, you'll get a sticker which will act as an active move or passive effect. Having a procedurally generated sticker pool means that these monsters can essentially have any move set and will get even better moves at that since he did state that uncommon and rares were more common in this case. The idea of the elemental types being different is another huge aspect to this as well, considering the fact that this coupled with the procedural generation for the stickers, and let's not forget about the procedurally generated fusions, makes the amount of in-game combinations just absolutely insane. Another great example is the glitter type bootleg that Sark captured. By the looks of it, the glitter type is a technique only type and is generally temporary when using a move called glitter bomb. Basically what this move does is it hits an opponent and transforms them into glitter type. And then whenever these glitter types hit, they transform into different types and it just, the glitter gets everywhere and it's kind of nuts. Usually this is just during battle since there's no naturally spawning glitter types, but in this case, a bootleg could fill that role. Now, when it comes to actually obtaining one of these, I'm going to let my buddy Barry Bandit explain how he was able to capture a few bootlegs himself. How do you acquire a bootleg cassette beast? You could go the easy route and check out my video on my channel, iCard in the upper right hand corner. So the odds of finding a wild bootleg cassette beast is one in a thousand. It's not as terrible as Pokemon or Tim Tim, but still one in a thousand will take some time to find one out in the wild. So what is neat about this game is that the overall sprites will express the bootleg colors, making it easier to see. Bootlegs can be easily missed since the demo version doesn't have any audio cues or visual sparkles like Pokemon Shinies. If you pay attention in battle, the name of the cassette beast will be in red, which is the only way to tell that it's a bootleg besides the color palette change. Before you go bootleg hunting, you will need to farm some plastics from traffic crabs in the beginning area to make cassette tapes to record your beast. So if you're lucky and the one in 1000 odds hit you, you should be seeing a bootleg at this point. So trust me, bring lots of cassette tapes because you can burn through them pretty quickly. Key thing is to weaken the bootleg and record them. Cool part is even if your cassette piece is over leveled during the recording process, the bootleg won't die, making it easier to weaken them. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much what we know about the shiny system in Cassette Beast so far based on the information present within the current demo build. Things, of course, can change leading up to launch, and when the full game is released, I'll definitely be putting out a more updated guide to compensate. Just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone that helped out with this guide, and don't forget to check out Barry Bannon on YouTube if you guys want some more monster taming content from him. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for daily monster taming uploads, and you can also check out my Twitter, my Discord, and Patreon links below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Dro Ghost, Dark Persona, Jim Hamilton and Exodus and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.